Electricity is essentially a concept that deals with the movement of electrons. Now we call a certain object a good conductor of electricity if that object allows the movement of electrons. So we can essentially categorize objects or materials into two different categories. We have conductors and insulators. So a conductor is essentially an object or a material in which the atoms do not hold the electrons very strongly and that means electrons are able to move rather freely within that material. So one example of a conductor is metal. So metals are good conductors of electricity because the atoms, the nuclei within the atoms of metals do not hold the electrons very strongly and so electrons are able to flow from one section of that conductor to a different section of that conductor. Now an insulator is essentially the opposite. So inside an insulator the electrons are bound to the nuclei of the atom very strongly and so that means electron flow is very limited. So one example of an insulator is wood. Wood is an example of an insulator because the nuclei of the atoms inside wood hold the electrons very tightly and so that means electrons won't flow very easily within insulating materials. Now in the same way that we have conservation of energy we also have conservation of electric charge. That basically means electric charge cannot be destroyed nor can it be created but electric charge can flow from one object to another object in the same way that energy can flow from one area to another area. So now we're going to essentially discuss a process known as induction and charging objects by induction. So, let's suppose we have two objects. Let's suppose our two objects are metal rods. So that means they're good conductors of electricity. So rod number one is a neutral rod and rod number two has a positive charge. So these two rods are separated by a large distance in part A. Now if we move to part B, let's suppose now we bring our two rods in physical contact with one another. What will begin to take place? Well, in the same way that energy flows from a higher temperature to a lower temperature, we know that electrons will begin to flow from the area where we have more electrons to the area where we have less electrons. And that means electrons will begin to flow from the neutral rod to this positively charged rod. So electrons will be attracted and will flow from the neutral rod, rod number one, to the positively charged rod, rod number two. Therefore, metal rod number one will lose electrons and rod number two will gain those electrons. So we say that rod number one has been induced with a charge and this process of charging our rod is known as induction. Now another type of induction exists in which we don't actually have to bring these two objects in physical contact with one another. So let's examine induction and grounding. So whenever we ground an object, we essentially connect that object to the ground. So we take a wire, we take some type of conducting material and we connect our rod to the ground. So this is a symbol that means grounded. So this is a neutral rod and we connect our rod to a metal wire and that metal wire is connected to the ground. So the metal acts as a conductor of electrons and it allows the flow of electrons and the ground acts as an acceptor of those electrons. So once again we have a neutral charge. So let's suppose we move on to part B. In part B, we bring a negatively charged rod very close to this rod. 
what will begin to take place? Well, the electrons in this rod will repel the electrons in this rod, and electrons will be forced, will move in this direction, eventually leaving our rod and traveling inside the wire all the way to the ground. Now, what will happen if I cut this wire? So, if I cut the wire, the charge that was developed on this object will remain on that object. So, if this object object was positively charged, this object will remain positively charged. So this concept, this process is known as induction in which we don't actually physically touch our two objects as shown. And we ground that object so that those electrons have a place to go. They travel via the wire all the way to the ground.